Thank you so much for taking the time. And I'm going to start with a question um, about, about passion and about um, your career as a clinical psychologist. Is this something that from your childhood that you always wanted to know about how minds work and things like that? Could you tell us how you, if it was a passion like that, how, how you developed it? How did you get interested in wanting to know about how minds work? Okay, so I think that's very interesting to kind of know because from a very different perspective because I'm talking to the English department, right? <laughs> and uh, my teenage dream, I would say, was to become an English literature professor and read books. And it was a very selfish motive. My whole idea was that I can read books. I will have access to libraries, so there will be a lot of books. I will have access to young minds like by, by the time I grow old, to whom I can discuss and understand. So it was like a whole, it was for me a plan laid ahead in my mind. Like this is how my life has to be. And then I had to choose in BA the subjects. So I said, okay, English literature, then what? So the different combinations that I went through, um, somebody came and told me that you need to take a practical subject to get more marks because English literature professors give very less marks. So you won't get a first class. And please understand, I'm talking about 1982 and not, <laughs> so it's a long, long time back, right? So then I said, okay, so what should, what are the practical subjects I can take? And then uh, when I saw the combination, I, I had to choose between psychology, music, and uh, home science. I said, music is something I enjoy, so I don't want to learn because I was not a person who was into either music learning. I said, home science, my mother will anyway use and teach me at home. So what is left is psychology. And I was in Rajasthan at that point of time where it was like early marriage and all that stuff. And though being a South Indian, I was like, okay, I'll get married very soon. Like, because that's the kind of thing. So I said, yeah, at least if nothing else, psychology will help me handle the in-laws better. So with that background, I took psychology. But I think the first day of my college and my professor, Dr. A.K. Malik, I think he's, he's no more now. But he kind of introduced the subject in such a beautiful manner that I just fell in love with the subject. And then when I started reading, I, so the whole idea was still, the, my focus was on uh, English literature. But when I started reading psychology and started doing the lab work, uh, I asked, requested one of my friend to be a subject, as we know in psychology, we need. And after doing the sub, uh, experiment, I would interpret, go read more and give her tips to implement. She would go and implement the tips. And she would come back and report to me. So first year only, I started these small initiatives on my own. And when she would come back and say, she said, hey, Shobha, this worked. She said, Shobha, this did not work. It was such an eye-opener for me. And I think somewhere between my professor and my subject, my friend, I think I fell in love with psychology. And if I have to put in one word, I think from that day that I fell in love, I'm still not out, out of love from psychology and continue to kind of work in the field. So it's a very interesting twist that I kind of got, but I think by end of BA, I was very clear psychology is my field. English literature can be my, uh, you know, can just be my passion and I can, you know, read books at any point of time I want, but uh, psychology is something because I see a huge potential of it in terms of helping people. So then I shifted to BA honors and I think the passion continues. And I think I'm at a stage where I reached a stage very soon where I said that if you're, hobby becomes your vocation, then you tend to be on a lifelong vacation. And I think that's the philosophy by which I live and that kind of takes me forward. So that's how I, I have uh, kind of, that's, the, that's my passion for psychology in a nutshell. <laughs> I don't think I could ever think of psychology as being something that is, was like a hobby. That's wonderful. So you go through your days feeling like you're, just on a vacation yes in fact if i don't uh, there was a time i think now i'm out of it but i think there was a time if i didn't see clients or didn't do psychology work for few days like i, I i've gone somewhere as a family i used to feel very awkward and i used to say i think i have a uh, you know psychology lag people have jet lags and i have psychology lag <laughs> i need to do something so <laughs> So do you, could you tell us where you work? Do you, are you just, uh, is it a, a self-employed or do you work at a clinic or where, where do you work? 
So currently, I'm at a very different stage. As um, Anita said, that yeah, it is 32 years, Anita, after Nimhans. So and the before Nimhans, so the, of studying psychology. But so I had uh, strategically decided that I'll work across different target groups and not make myself a super specialist. When I started my career, after completing my Nimhans, um, I, I went back to Rajasthan. I was the first clinical psychologist to set up a clinic in Nimhans in Rajasthan and run it successfully for six years wow. and I used to get a lot of clients and I worked in a school for uh, mentally challenged children then I used to work in a clinic where I used to see all kinds of clients but they also had a polyclinic which used to deal with infertile couples so I used to do couple counseling and whatever required for the infertility issues and all that stuff but slowly as I kind of uh, progressed and I came to Bangalore in 1997 I decided that I will work across all target groups. So I kind of started taking anything and everything that came and I was a freelancer. So I became a diversified practitioner by default. Okay. So it's like my one client could be a five-year-old. My next client could be a 45-year-old. My next client could be a couple. My next would be a remedial trainer. So like that I did. And I got extremely involved with skills development and life skills by then. And that's when I started developing life skills training modules and manuals and stuff like that, and then got into it. And I continue to do that for a very long time. So currently I'm at a stage where I'm trying to condense all of them and put it in a in different things so that the legacy can go forward and things can be taken forward. So I currently work in a company called Parent Talk. 2014, another love affair happened. It was not infidelity, let me make it clear. <laughs> <laughs> it was still another love affair and I married the two love, loves of my life and which is technology. I got extremely uh, um, engrossed and enthralled by technology. Wow. So, yeah. So I was then trying to figure out how psychology and technology can come together and how can their marriage happen. So I want to let my love get married. <laughs> so... When I started doing a lot of experiments on that, I had an engineering student. We did a lot of experiments, spent some money to very quickly realize that my knowledge of psychology is good. My knowledge of uh, technology is pathetic. So I coined two words. I said, I'm a dystechnia. Like we have dyscalculia, dysgraphia. I, say, I, I coined the word saying, I'm a dystechnia, which means technology is something I'm dysfunctional at. Today, I call myself mystechnia because I... Whatever softwares are developed, I can master them very soon, but I can't develop, I can't create. However, this, uh, I would say the crazy phase of my life was well taken by some of my friends with whom I was constantly discussing my challenges. And one of my friends uh, uh, with some other people decided to start this company called Parent Off. Okay, Parent OF Off. Okay. Parent Off. So uh, then they were interviewing psychologists or subject special, uh, you know, subject matter experts for the same thing. And they came to me, they said, we have only half an hour, we'll talk to you. And that half an hour meeting actually ended up being a three hour meeting where I spoke about all the varieties of ways in which technology can help psychology and parenting. And then they said, okay, send us a proposal or whatever. I sent them something. Honestly, that never, <laughs> that proposal has never come to light, but it was more to kind of put the thought in the idea. And then they decided to take me on and I joined them in 2015 as a, a subject matter experts. And we are, we went on to, we are building, we are still on the thing, building the world's first artificial intelligence and machine learning based skill development program for uh, children. Between oh my the gosh, and children. I didn't yeah. know about this. Yeah. So we're trying to democratize skill development. So, and we are going at a very, very micro level to understand. So if you come and tell us that the child is not good at writing, we can actually identify uh, our, uh, um, we, are, and we are in the process of building uh, AI ML takes 10 years, 15 years, because the machine has to do a lot of learning. Mm -hmm. But we also have a team of experts and I lead those team of experts. So we can actually come and say why the child is not writing properly or the, why the speed of the writing is not good. And we can suggest simple non-writing activities to develop the skill, the outcome of that is the child writes faster. So this is just one example. We can do it for all, whether it's drawing, whether it is uh, learning, academic performance, uh, screen addiction, and all that stuff. So I've been leading.